Hello everyone, it is the Prophet Michael David, aka Aries, and uh, I hope everyone's having a great day. Alright, as I promised in my last video and the title of this video, uh, this is an explanation video of my last video, and it's like a nerdy, more uh, in-depth tutorial teaching of the prime counting function and the prime number theorem and how the graphs that I show you is exactly the prime counting function. As we've talked about previously, uh, we've talked about him before, uh, the next slide is a man named Carl Frederick Gauss. And that's where all of this uh, prime number theory, prime number counting function starts. And again, this is what he looks like. He died about 160 years ago, but um, his greatest claim to fame, yeah, one of them, but his greatest claim to fame was the prime counting function, the prime number theory. In a nutshell, the prime number theory just means that uh, prime numbers uh, have an asymptotic nature um, in the reciprocals, which I will explain later. And he came up with the prime counting function which uh, I've shown you before, but I'll show you again right now. So in reality, the prime counting function is just a graph. That's all it is. And all it does is it clicks up one whenever it gets to a prime number. So nobody considers one as a prime number, but so you go from one, two, two is a prime, so it clicks up one. And then it goes from two to three. Three is also a prime number, it clicks up one. Then it goes to four, nope, five. Yeah, it clicks up one. And so in reality, what the prime counting function is, it doesn't deal anything with the magnitudes of the primes, but it just clicks up one. It counts the primes as it goes through the natural numbers, which means that the prime counting function is actually uh, an analysis of the density of the primes, and even more so, it's more analysis of the spacing between the primes than the magnitude of the actual primes themselves. And so the slope starts out at one half, <laughs> and then the slope goes like this. It goes closer and closer and closer to zero over time, and that is what is meant by the asymptotic nature of the prime numbers. It's actually a number over that number, which is why it's one, but the slope goes to zero over infinity of prime numbers. That is a screenshot of uh, one of my worksheets from my last video. And to show the equivalency between that prime line, that blue line and everything, the zigzag line and what I just described is it's just inverted. Instead of going from this and slowly logarithmically going until the slope gets flat it starts at zero and goes up pretty quick to right at the start to two but then the slope goes up and up and up and up and up and up although more slowly over time until at infinity the slope is a million or not a million infinity and that slope is the prime number over its corresponding natural number. So the natural number divided by the nth prime. All right, here's one more screenshot from Wiki on this that I'm kind of obligated to explain. Okay, firstly, that sign that looks like pi is not actually pi. That's not like pi, pi on your calculator, 3.14, something, something, something. That symbol basically just means prime counting function of a certain number. So like in the very next slide, I'll show you how I do my notation so that you not confuse that thing with the actual value of pi. The second thing, the equation on the top, that's the prime number theorem. Um, that's the uh, x over log of x, or if you do it the way that I do it, it's x times log of x. And I'll explain why. The bottom one is what's called the logarithmic integral, integral. And as you can see, it's a better approximation, actually very, very good, but it deals with 
uh, integrals, and this has to deal with the difference between discrete mathematics and um, integral or continuous mathematics. With integrals, it's all area under a curve, and you can get exact uh, answers, but it's not really predictive. I mean, they can't state that equation in any other way except that uh, integral. Discrete, discrete mathematics is something different, and that's truly how you have to approach the primes. Uh, discrete mathematics, you come up with the equation, you type in n, and it kicks out the nth prime number. That's the grail. If anybody could do that, they would be the most famous human in history. In this case, I can't even do that. Uh, you need to come up with the equation that uh, you type in n, and it kicks out a value very close to the nth integral. The golden, um, or the holy grail here being an equation that the primes zigzag back and forth across for infinity. But nobody can do that either, but that's what I'm trying to do. But to be honest, for the sake of my work, or at least the stuff that I showed you in the last video, I do not go up to infinity. I don't have those kind of resources. Nobody do. But just so you know, how it corresponds to the prime counting function is as the follows. As I said very briefly earlier, at least when it comes to my work, I will never mention that symbol that looks as pi. I will always use, or I never, never write it down, I will always use PCF for prime counting function. So the one you just saw shows the limit of my work is from prime counting function of two, which equals one, because two is the first prime, to the prime counting function of 999,983, 999, which equals 78,498, which means that that number, which is the last number, uh, prime number under a million, is the 78,498th prime. Okay, that screenshot that I just showed is a super important screenshot. It talks about everything I've just discussed. Um, and one of the most important parts is the rightmost hand column, which talks about the slope. That's exactly how I do my work. It's the slope. I do it differently, but it, I do the magnitude of the primes over the natural number, which is the same thing. But I'm dealing with the slope of the primes, not the density of the primes. And again, if you're paying attention, that's why I cut the screenshot off where I did because we're only my work only deals with up to the prime magnitudes up to a million, so the first eighty-eight thousand somewhat primes, uh, not before that. But now I'm going to prove up to that point at least that uh, my estimate is much better than either uh, the prime number theorem or even uh, Lie of X which is continuous. <laughs> All right, this analysis is actually pretty easy, although it probably doesn't seem that way. But the first thing we have to do is just go to my spreadsheet and go to my last term, the 78,498th number, which corresponds to the 999,983 as a prime number, and see what uh, value my equation kicked out. All right, the first values are the two values that I just mentioned. So that third value is the one with the decimal is my uh, equation value. And you can round that up to the number 998,949. So then, since you know that my equation, once the numbers get sufficiently large, is a lower bounds of the primes, you know the actual prime number is going to be smaller than that. And so you just scroll up on my spreadsheet until you find values that are either exactly that value or it's in between, and then you just round up. And so I'll show you that now. Again, in this case, it landed in between two prime numbers, so it's in between two natural numbers. And so all I did was round up again, because I know at these large numbers, my equation is lower bounds. And so the answer, according to my equation, for 
that value is the prime value of 998,951, which corresponds to an end value of 78,429. And now, since those equations that you saw before, we're just dealing with how far you are off from the number of primes, all we have to do is do a calculation on that. And that's it. In other words, the 78,498th prime is the prime just under 1 million. But my equation would say that that number is the 78,429th prime, which means that at that level, I'm only off by 69 primes. My density is only off by 69 primes. Gross. And I threw in, again, that last shot, screenshot of uh, the wiki prime number theory page just to point out, and you can look at the numbers about how far those are off, that uh, my 69 is way, way closer than the normal prime counting function. And it's even almost twice as good as the logarithmic integral. And again, that's continuous and, in my opinion, cheating. You got to come up with an equation, you plug in n, and you get a value very close to the primes, which means, again, I'm very good at this, and like that's not my greatest theory of all time. It's just the greatest theory currently on the planet. All right, I did pretty good on time again. Uh, just closing out here, uh, let me just say that um, I will eventually show you my theory. I'm not going to tease you with this guy forever, only for like a couple months. I, even, I haven't even done like a, an analytic, analytic uh, study on it myself, which I should definitely do before I tell you guys. But eventually I'll come up with a better one and then a better one and then a better one after that. So yeah, I'm the best in the world. I'm trying to, again, trying to be the uh, greatest of all time. Uh, so signing off, uh, as always, rule number one, do not touch other people without their consent. And rule number two, it's all about honesty, lies are ticked down, aka, uh, turn out to lie.